Well, this is another one. So let's talk about it. I know people look at cars and then they say, a car is like a girlfriend, and that's true. Only one person or the owner of that car is one who knows how beautiful that car is. That's a lie. Actually, that's nonsense. The girlfriends were just ugly. And so in this video, we're going to show you exactly the ugliest common cars in the country, interior-wise. I don't care there's a personal view, but I know majority of people are going to agree with me once we are done with this list. Now, the first one is quite controversial, and I don't care what you guys are going to say again. This is the Mazda CX-5. Yes, this is a car with an exterior looks. I'm not denying it. It looks beautiful. And that's the case with all Mazdas, but where things are not working with the recently popular SUV in the country is the interior looks. Now, for lack of a better word, it looks as if the interior designers just ran out of time and rushed on the job. Now, the car has had little to no improvement in its interior design since 2013. Don't get me wrong again, but its 2013 screen bump on the dash looks as if it bubbles entirely from 1990 design cues. In 2014, they removed the bump and they introduced a slightly less deep bump, and that was it. That was it. But the lack of rule of fats in the car's interior continued all the way to 2019, where they disappointingly planted an infotainment screen so far away from the driver and so much into the screen that they made it look like a heads-up display. Hmm. Now, the design went through what you can call a slight facelift in 2018 onwards with the introduction of the waterfall center cancel that sweeps through the middle of the car to the back, but they failed to find a better position for the infotainment screen again. Jesus! Overall, when you sit in the car, you still feel that even with the frail chance at introducing contrast through colors and a greener shapes on the dashboard for the climate control vents, the visual identity still hasn't clicked for the car. It still looks like a mopper. All right, number two, again, controversial. Subaru? Subaru? Subaru Forester 2015, depending on where you're coming from. Now, listen, I had a problem when Toyota first took a stake in Subaru in 2005 in a move that was entirely Toyota spreading its bets. Now, so after they took over, they made the car more silent, much to the disappointment of many Subaru fans. But what was largely expected and happened was the crappy visual attention Toyota gave its cars that met the famous Subaru Forester. Now, in simple words, the car's interior since 20, 2013 looks like an intern sneaked in their drawings into the main folder. What I mean, it is a simple no. I don't care how many Subaru fans will come out and, and rubbish my sentiments here, but I don't understand how that is Basic. No, I, I promise, like, and even, even from a line that has for a long time held good sales for Supra. Round chips with mixed bottom pressed squares and rectangles just do not make for good design. Come on, Supra. Or should I say, come on, Toyota. Now, the 2013 interior, largely inspired by the Toyota team, just describes one thing in general trypophobia. Go look for the meaning of that word. Now, the design spilled over into 2014 with a huge climate control buttons that take up the entire vision focus. It is uninspiring and inviting, and for the three years to 2019, Toyota were not inspired to change a single major thing in the interior, and in 2019, they gave you a larger Tesla-inspired infotainment screen surrounded by climate vents and controls from 2013. A fail. Toyota Prado TX. That's fine. It's a big car. It's a rolling job. <laughs> Politician walking stick and shopping trolley in Dubai. Generally, a useless car. It had always been a useless car. Now, <laughs> I don't care how many people have abused me before the end of that line. So Toyota says that TX means impeccable power and efficiency. 
So that's another short form 21, clearly. Now, the exterior design language for the body has generally just been the same since 1990s, only changing on the front face of a couple of times over the years and at a snail pace. Now, from 2013 to 2019, the only notable difference in that car is the change in the position of the climate control vents from the side of the infotainment screen to the top of the screen. Not said. The interior is not involving for such a big car. It looks plain. Honestly, when you compare the league it plays in, it is not minimal either, which will give you a break from the expecting much for spending a lot of money on it. It's not. Yes, there is a new infotainment knob gimmick that looks like a Sony Hi-Fi radio from 2010. But the fact that dashboard is compressed or squeezed so much, it gives you a sense of incompleteness or can i get just a little bit more please and that is no good for a cruiser you expected to spend many hours in for your long distance travels because essentially that is what is meant for listen kenyans a tx is an off-road car you're supposed to go with it to the mud roads in the country but how many kenyans buy it for that actually no right. now in 2020 they even made the infotainment screen smaller while their peers were making it bigger. Jesus. I mean, from such a big SUV, you'd expect some expression in the use of the space. But not for Toyota and Prado TX. You will sit in the car and feel like you are seated on a bench in a Catholic church with the infotainment lights only acting as the holy illumination candles. Let's move on. Toyota Filter. Now, Toyota's notion of uh, profitability is well expressed by how many of the filters you see on the Kenyan roads. In few words, so many. Now, with a Toyota filter, the only thing you get is a good engine with cheap parts and a next door mechanic who can diagnose your car from a WhatsApp voice note. But other than that, the car has slowly gotten uglier and confused from 2013 to date. Ask me what they have changed. <clears throat> nothing. Absolutely nothing. Those are nine years of nothing other than cutting back on using any extra chip material on the center console for the two cup holders in front of the gear lever selector. How? Bumba clad! Now the dashboard looks like it is floating and the wavy shape disagrees with any regular instrument installed on it. Now everything from the factory on the dashboard looks aftermarket due to the irregularity of the dashboard. Yes, you can argue that you have a good engine and that you are supported by the assurity of the Toyota reliability, but that just can't be it. I mean, your office desk or kitchen counter is just more engaging than the interior of the filter. Now, your passenger has absolutely nothing other than a vent in front of them. And that's just it. No, but it's a bit way. Now, this one, Master Demio. I've seen it. It's, my Kenyans are driving, eh? And I'm wondering, how would you sit in such a car? Now, let's talk about it. From the lack of essential door cabins at the back to hold your phone or anything you may want to carry in the car to a dashboard that looks like it was molded as an afterthought to cover any exposed part. This car, it looks stupidly ugly inside. Now, the entire dashboard has not improved since 2007 to 2013. And the only addition is just a screen and a steering control on the steering wheel and an infotainment screen. That's it. So from 2007 to 2013, six years of producing the car, that's it. Now the center console is non-existent. It is brief and an eyesore to look at and feel at the same time. It looks molded from a cheap log and yes, it doesn't deserve this attention we are giving it. Listen, there are better small cars than a Demio from 2007 to 2013. So many of them. Now, for a reasonably priced car like the Demio, they need to do better. 
And that's my list. That's it. Let's meet in the next one.